Okay, so I'm about to get extremely detailed in this video about what happened this last week. I got a phone call from a DCFS worker. It was the worker who it has the claim for baby S to pick up. At the time, the baby was three days old. I'm gonna explain everything from the time I got that call last Monday to what happened this Monday. It has to do with the social worker calling me to pick up the baby. In that time, I got called for three other babies. In that time, the grandparents told me they want me to adopt the child. To yesterday, me telling the social worker, I'm not picking up this baby. That's what this video is all about. This entire process is starting to drastically drive me crazy. Um, sorry about any noise. That's Los Angeles. Right now I'm at Alex's house in Hollywood. Um, and I wanted to get this video done. So last Monday, today is Tuesday, last Monday, one week ago, I was right here. I was making some eggs for Alex and I. I get a phone call and someone's name came on and it was the social worker that uh, was in charge of baby S when I had baby S. So naturally I was excited. I was like, oh, wow, why is she calling me? You know, there's this thing in the back of my head that like maybe baby S will come back to me someday because I know that that happens. She called me and she said, hi, Kevin, how are you doing? Yada, yada, yada. Um, I wanted to know, do you currently have any placements of any babies in your care? I said, no, I do not. I'm still waiting. So she says to me, okay, well, there is a baby that was born um, and I wanted to know, do you want to take this child? Bear with me, everyone, okay? Because this gets crazy. I said, sure, tell me the details. She says to me, well, the baby has two siblings. Off the bat, I'm like, okay, well, when we know there's siblings in the foster care system, the odds of you getting to ever go to to full adoption for that child is much less likely because the city always wants to place children together siblings together she said well i have the other two siblings um on another on i'm the case manager for the other two siblings those siblings are with the grandparents to the children I said okay however these grandparents have said they are no longer able to take any more children, that they're maxed out. And the social worker said, okay, well, I know this guy who's really great with children. Um, let, do you want me to call him and see if he could take the baby? So they said yes. And the social worker told the grandparents, now this is on Monday, the social worker told the grandparents, I just want you to know he wants to adopt. He is interested in adopting a child. Now, let me back up even a little bit more. When I turned over baby S, this social worker, she said to me, Kevin, you need to let these social workers know that call you to pick up children, that let them know that you want to adopt. So they're not placing children with you that have more of a likelihood to be reunified back to the family. You want to let them know up front. So I've been doing that. So she is fully aware <laughs> that I want to go all the way to adoption. Okay, another disclaimer. I am in favor of reunification. I think reunification is wonderful if it's appropriate for the child. When she told the grandparents that I wanted to adopt the child, the grandparents then responded to her, that is fine. We are totally okay with him adopting this child because we can't do it. 
we're tapped out on children. Um, they're like a young, they're younger grandparents, okay? So they have a child of their own and then they have the two grandchildren that are like, one is just turning two and the other one's younger. They said, our only thing is, we want to be able to name this child because the child, the child's mother left the hospital, didn't even name the baby. They said, we want to be able to name this child. And they said that they want to have visitations with the child throughout the child's life. And I was like, well, of course, like I'm not trying to take them away from the family. I, you go into foster care knowing that you're gaining another family. But that child's family is always gonna be in their life. That's what open adoption is. So I was like, well, of course. So I wait all day on Monday. The social worker says, I will call you We're and I will let you know what's going on with picking up the child. Waiting all day on Monday. I message her, what's going on? She says, I don't have any information from the ER worker yet. The ER worker is the person that detains the child and brings the child to the foster parent. So Tuesday comes along, I text, do you have any information? Radio silence, ignores me all day long. I'm like, okay, whatever. So then Wednesday comes along, I finally get on the phone with her and I said, um, cause she called me and she said, hey, Kevin, I have an update. She said, we still haven't detained the child. No, that she said the child was detained. She didn't know about it. I don't know if I believe that. Um, and the child was placed in another foster family, in another foster home. I was like, well, okay. She said, don't worry. The It's just an emergency placement. Every single child in the foster care system goes through like if they're new to being in foster care, they're, they're put in an emergency placement. And every child when they're detained has to have a hearing within 72 hours. So the child was detained and the hearing for that child was set for last Friday. So just a few days ago, social worker said to me on Friday, the case is gonna then get released from the ER worker and released and put to me and when I get the case, I am going to then transfer that baby from the current emergency placement foster home to you, Kevin. In the meantime, the grandparents want to speak to you. They asked me to have you call them. I was like, okay, that's different, but sure, I'll call them. So she gives me their information. So keep in mind, this baby was gonna be transferred to the social worker. The case file was gonna be transferred to the social worker on Friday. And then she told me on Monday or Tuesday, meaning today, Tuesday, or yesterday, Monday, the baby would then be transferred to me in my care. And I would have had this child. Wednesday, I have a 50, five zero, 50 minute conversation on the phone with the grandmother. It was wonderful, lovely. She talked to me about God. She talked to me about how wonderful I was, how welcoming, how loving I seemed. I have a big heart, all of these things, all of these wonderful things. And she seemed like a wonderfully beautiful person there. I know I had no alarms, no red flags or anything. We talked about what life would look like. We talked about that, you know, she would, um, I would make sure to do visitations. We talked about Christmases together. We, they, and she invited me to the, to the other, to one of the children's birthdays in July. And they wanted me to bring the, the baby and all of these things. We talked for 50 minutes about what life would look like. And she specifically said to me, we are going to advocate for you to adopt this child. She said, we all know that the lawyers and the system is gonna to wanna to keep the siblings together. However, Kevin, we cannot take this baby. It's too much for us. She even said, we have an assessment scheduled next week, meaning this current week that we're in right now, for our house to be assessed so that we can take in a third child. So 
I'm go then she said, I'm going to contact the social worker and I'm gonna find out if she wants us to cancel that, that meeting to have our house assessed because we know we want you to take the child and we want you to adopt the child. I said, oh, okay, that's fine, great, that's wonderful. Like, okay. We have our conversation, Wednesday goes by, we're texting through the day, it's great, we're excited, she's excited for me, I'm excited. Thursday goes by, I talk to Alex, I explain everything, Alex is excited about it. And meanwhile, I'm like, oh man, I gotta wait until next week. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be so hard to just, you know, wait and I wanna buy clothing, I wanna buy the stuff that we need for this tiny little baby. I was like, let me hold off, let me hold off because I've gotten super excited in the past and you know, three times at this point, I've been called for a child and never got that child. So let me just hold off. Friday comes around. So, so I'm sorry, Thursday happens the next day. And I knew that they had a court hearing for the other children that was really big in their process. So I said, hey, I hope you have a great day for your hearing today. So Thursday and Friday happen. In the course of Thursday and Friday, she starts, the grandmother starts sending me text messages that says, hey, and I believe this was on Friday, says, hey, are you sure you want to take the child? You know, you know, she starts talking about the the biological parents, meaning her daughter and the, the father and saying things about them that, you know, can you deal with them? Is it gonna be an issue? All of these things, and I don't wanna get into the details of it, but just a lot of things that I think would have made some people, I guess, a little bit worried. And I was like, it's okay, I'm gonna be fine. I understand that this is part of the process, this is the things that you deal with. Um, but she said something, I want you to, if you get a call for another child, take that call, take that baby, I would understand. And I, I was with Alex at one point and I was like, what, this seems so weird. Why would she be sending me these messages? I even asked her on Friday, I said, something seems off. Do you still want me to take the child? And she said, yes, if it comes to that. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna, all right. So, you know, I was definitely a little alert and felt odd about the situation. So I said, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna let this be. She's just going through a lot because again, remember I knew on Thursday, the day before that she had an important hearing that was very, very pivotal in the case for the other two siblings. So I was like, maybe she's just feeling things. Um, so then all weekend goes by. Friday night, Saturday, Sunday goes by. Sunday, um, I text her or she texts me, I can't remember. Um, and she then says something else about, that was just a little flippant. And it was really, again, I felt a little like, what is happening, what's going on? I said, I was with Alex, we were looking, you know, at some places in Pasadena. And um, I said, hey, what, doesn't this seem weird? And he said, yeah, it seems a little odd or whatever, but let's let's stay positive. And so I go through the whole Sunday, right? And then Monday hits, yesterday. This is where stuff gets really upsetting. I send a text message to the social worker. I said, hey, good morning. I just wanted to know, I know we're supposed to transfer the baby today or tomorrow. Would you like, um, can, do you have any update on when we'll be doing this so I can plan accordingly for it? She sends me a text message back. She said, the case will be transferred to me today or tomorrow and we will transfer the baby by the end of the week. So first off, I'm like, that's not what you said. You told me the case would be transferred to you on Friday and we would transfer the baby on Monday or Tuesday, meaning the literally the paperwork would be given to her. She would be set as the social worker for this child on Friday. And then Monday or Tuesday, we would transfer the baby to my care. But I was like, fine, whatever, so be it. It took over the weekend, it took a little bit of time. I was like, okay, I'll wait through the week, it's fine. Now again, remember, I turned away, by this time, I turned away three different children. I got called last week for three different children that I said I cannot take because I knew that I was expecting this little girl. So 
I then yesterday, Monday, texted the grandmother because we said we would keep each other updated. I texted the grandmother and I said, hey, I spoke to a social worker. She told me this, that we would transfer at the end of the week. She said, that's weird because I spoke to her today via text and she told me she has no updates for me. And she got really pissed off about that. The social, uh, the grandmother got pissed off. She's like, why is she lying? I said, I don't know. I'm just letting you know what she said to me because I didn't want to cause issues. So I said, okay, well, wait. Then she, it's like a, uh, it's like she punched me in the face. The grandmother, she says, Kevin, I have to be honest. She goes, my, my daughter said she wants us to take the baby. And she said, I don't like when people lie. I don't like liars. I got to be honest with you. She said, I talked to my husband and he wants, he wants to consider taking the baby as well. And I said, well, okay. Um, what did she say? She says he wants to consider taking the baby as well. Um, I, I'm really sorry, you know. Oh, she said, I jumped the gun on when I was talking to you. And I was like, okay, well, fine. And I said um, that basically, you know, I would take the child in the short term if necessary, <laughs> either way. And then the conversation goes on and she was upset about the social worker not being honest. And she said to me, she was trying to reassure me and like, don't be disappointed, don't be discouraged. Cause she knows that I want to adopt. We had a 50 minute long conversation the week before. But when she sent me this message, all of my, I saw the red flags that I was seeing, like on Friday and Sunday when I was getting these weird cryptic messages from her, like, are you sure you want to do this? And, you know, talking about the parents, I was just like, this doesn't seem, this doesn't seem right. So she said, don't be discouraged, don't be disappointed. And I said, look, there's no way not to be disappointed about this. I said no to three children. And she replied back, I told you don't say no to any other children. And I said to her, I said no to those children days before, I mean, the day that we talked on the phone, well before you ever came back to me three days later saying, don't say no to children. <laughs> like I was going off of people's word. So then I sent a text message yesterday to the social worker and I said, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be taking this child. You know, I said, I was told by the grandmother that they wanna now try and keep the child. And we all know that siblings are always tried to try to be kept together. And there's no reason, I, I'm not willing to go through what I went through with baby S again. I'm not willing to fight like that again, up against a, a set of grandparents. The court's never going to keep that child with me. And if I know I wanna go all the way to adoption, then this isn't the child for me. So I said like, it's not gonna work out for me, you know, because they want to try to adopt the child. <laughs> and the social worker said to me, wow, that's news to me. And this is what I wanted to say back. I wanted to say, oh really, that's news to you? Because what the grandmother also told me yesterday is that the social worker last week, when the grandmother asked her, should I cancel the assessment to get our house assessed for the third baby? The social worker then said, no, don't cancel that assessment. And I got to thinking, why would she have told her not to cancel the assessment? And I realized because the social worker wanted to play puppets with me. She wanted to keep me on the string, on the leash, because if the house didn't get assessed, then she would transfer the baby to me. 
There's no reason we needed to wait till the end of this week. She's waiting for that assessment to go through. If the, if the house gets cleared, then she's gonna move the baby to the grandparents, which great, that's fantastic. But don't keep me out of loop. Don't not tell me because you want to have a backup person because she knows if she tells me this, I'm gonna say, well, it's not right for me. I'm gonna move on, you know? If I get a call, I'm gonna accept that call, you know? And if it doesn't get accepted, then she would say, oh, we're ready to transfer the baby, Kevin. These are the things that are driving me crazy with DCFS. I've said it before and I will continue to say it. You're the first person to care for these children. You are told to love these children like they are your biological children, to defend them, to, to, to love them, to care for them, keep them safe. You are the last person to find out details. You're the last person to, you know, to have any sort of empathy for. You are lied to, you are deceived by DCFS. It's the truth. It is the truth. So if you want to go through the foster care system, you need to know that these are the things that you will come up against. There are documentaries about it everywhere. One thing that keeps me going, one thing that keeps me going, if you've never held a little baby in your arms and watched them look at you as you, as you are feeding them, you just don't understand why people keep going through this. There is something in that that is magical that happens. So I say to myself, well, I'm the parent in this moment, you know, when I'm, when, when these little kids are with me, they are worth dealing with the roller coaster of DCFS. I will also say that not everyone, I don't believe that every DCFS worker is shady. I don't believe that everyone at the county level is shady. I can guarantee you that people at my agency are lovely, wonderful people who only want the best, right? I know that there are good people in this system. I don't know why I've been profiled like I've been profiled. I don't know why I'm experiencing the things I've experienced over the last couple of weeks with this. But I'm to the point where I'm giving it one last shot. I'm gonna give it one last shot. I will accept the call. If, if I get a call for a child from my agency and it feels like I should say yes to that, I'm gonna say yes. If that child doesn't come show up in my arms that day or the next day, whenever I'm told they're gonna to bring me the child, I'm done. Because at this point, there's been four children in a row that I've been told will show up at my house and they've never showed up. So if it happens again, I'm finished. And I will look at becoming a parent in different ways. But y'all know, we're going on almost a year by this point. In August will be a year. Y'all know that I have tried hard. I have given my heart to this. I've given my mind space to this. And if I get a call from my agency and I accept that call and accept that child and the child does show up, I will do everything that I have to do to parent that child. And if I get to adopt that child, fantastic. If that child gets reunified with their family properly, fantastic. Then I'll consider at that point if I'll do it again with another child. But where I'm at right now is I need the child to show up because I'm to the point where I no longer want to do this. I'm at right now extending myself beyond what I think I'm capable of extending myself to so that maybe this can happen. That's all I got to say. That's what's been going on this last week. And I, I thought things were gonna be different. I thought things were gonna be different, but this has been hard. I don't know what else to say, but I really do thank everybody for watching and the comments and I've gotten some messages from people that this has discouraged them from going through the foster care system. And there's times where I wonder, am I at fault for that? But I'm not, I'm not at fault from that. I'm a great guy. I'm a great guy, a great parent. I love really hard. I have the space 
the mind space, the heart for this. And it's not my fault the way that DCFS treats me or treats other people. But I will continue to tell my story. And this, unfortunately, is part of it. So I'll say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I hope my next video, my next video is going to be a video where I get to introduce a beautiful, beautiful baby to you all. In the most loving of ways. I love you guys. Peace out.